And we are live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fleming Film Show. Today is a fantastic episode because not only am I joined by Justin Doyle, I am joined by the first ever female guest on the show. Hello, Alison. How are you? Great. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. You're right. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> yeah. You're right, Justin. Yeah, Allison is, uh, yeah, everything's good with me. Allison's an East Coaster. She's uh, in New York. Um, and uh, you were on the Cody Cody's uh, podcast. That's how yes. we linked up with you. Yeah. Yeah, Cody's been on a few times. Yes, what so episodes episode did you do? With you him? spoke about oh, cool. Tom's Labyrinth. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, that was fun. That was very fun. I got so to rewatch it uh, for the first time after it came out in theaters, and it was a pleasure to rewatch it. Like some films are just really solid, you know. Yes, I have think I preferred it on the second watch, to be honest with you as well. Have you seen Guillermo del Toro's latest? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I saw it. Thankfully, in the theaters, Nightmare Alley. Yeah, um, where I feel like. Pan's Labyrinth was really strong with the story. It wasn't that Nightmare Alley wasn't strong with the story, but it was like based on a novel, and I felt like they paid attention more to the style over substance. Um, I wasn't really fond of the Bradley Cooper character, and he was the lead. Um, a lot of cinephiles are really liking everything about it, um, so that's great. I am very sorry I didn't do great at the theater, but I think that's partially COVID's fault. You know, everyone went to see Spider-Man, but a lot of the smaller films aren't doing that well. That no, wasn't no. really a small film, though. It, it had, like, a great budget, great look, great everything, uh, great actors. Um, I So I... I I would recommend that movie to people mainly for the, you know, great direction and great performances, but the story just didn't do it for me. I wasn't really actually fond of the original either story-wise. I was just kind of like, eh, but I am a huge noir fan. So I do appreciate that he oh, made this. Yeah. Yeah. I think yes. Uh, yes. And seeing the today original Today we are going maybe. to be talking about our, sorry, today, sorry. Oh, today yeah, we are going to be talking about our, Top five uh, favorite British actresses. I've picked my five, and I'm pretty sure you guys have picked yours. I have my five. Excellent, excellent. And because this is Alison's uh, first time on the show, would you like to reveal your number five, Alison? Sure. Are we uh, talking about one, two, three, four, five, or just number five and counting down? Counting down. Uh, we we'll, do five. So what we do is uh, you say your fifth. Uh, I'll say mine, and then Justin says his, and then we just okay. Go, go oh, so just the list? Uh, should I? I'm sorry. <laughs> five, four, just three, two, five. one, or one, two. Just, so five. just start, and just then start with five, and then I'll and say then my number five, and then just. Oh, I see. Okay, so at number five, and I wanted to rank her higher because I love her so much, and I've loved her ever since I saw Sense and Sensibility in the movie theater. But Emma Thompson, love her to death. Good pick. What are Good some of your pick. favorite uh, movies from her? Well, yeah. Well, first of all, like when I saw Sense and Sensibility in the theater, it was a revelation. She wrote the screenplay, or rather adapted it from Jane Austen. As I was telling you earlier, I'm a huge Jane Austen fan um, and wit. And I was just, uh, I just watched a film with her, Dead Again. Um, and she, and she, she was even in Cruella. Um, just solid, solid performance. Like she can basically do no wrong. No, she can't. She can't. I do <laughs> think I do prefer her in comedy films. Oh, okay. I and I love, I love both. Her, I love John. her character in the Harry Potter fan franchise as well. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of uh, actresses who may be in the Harry Potter franchise because oh, yes. all of the British actors are in them. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And uh, she was in Last Christmas, too, so very funny in that. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, yes, that was a fun film. <laughs> I like You guys in, ready to uh, hear my number five? Yes. Oh, yeah, sure. Right, so my number five 
this woman is a legend. She hasn't been in the Harry Potter franchise, but she has <laughs> been in one, another iconic British franchise, James Bond. And my number five is Dame Judi Dench. Oh, I love her. Love her. I just good, think that good, she good. is probably one of the greatest actresses to come in Britain. I mean, I'm not big on the film Shakespeare in Love, but her performance is the highlight. And that scene at the end where she does her speech is probably the best scene in the movie. And I'm just glad that it was her who managed to save that movie for me, even though I'm not big on it myself. But it's just nice to always see her presence whenever she does. And I feel like she always puts in 100%. She's old school. She's Judy, she's Judy Dench. And, she's, and she is a brilliant actress, and she delivers fantastic performances. She's also uh, co-starring in a movie that's getting some Oscar or some buzz, uh, award buzz in Belfast. She, you know, she's great in that. Uh, I really enjoyed her in uh, Philomena a lot. I thought that was a really good movie. Um, got her a nomination there. And uh, Victoria and Abdul, I know it's kind of a silly movie, but I thought she was so great as Queen Victoria. And was really she she shows her acting chops whether it's um comedic or or uh, dramatic yeah so she is picks. probably the best thing about cats actually i immediately uh. thought of <laughs> the importance of being earnest i remember seeing the extra features and like they had like this clip that wasn't you know color corrected it was just like off the cuff and she had this big, booming theater voice. I mean, just ever since then, I mean, I respected her before, but ever since I'm like, she's got it. You know, she's just so amazing. And yeah, I saw Philomena twice in the theaters. So amazing. I love her to death. Um, definitely on my honorable mentions. I wish I could include like every British actress because I love them so much. But yeah. Yes, and I now am, um, Justin Doyle is going um, to reveal his number five. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's sort of the same thing. It's like I want to put him higher uh, because, you know, we love him so much. Um, my number five, uh, she's in, she is in the Harry Potter series, but she first was uh, caught my eye in the Sister Act series, and it's Maggie Smith uh Ooh. just so uh, so 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 good i mean she's she can just kind of it's like judy dent she can kind of just sit there and she's acting her balls off like it's so well done you know um she's she's transformative i mean i don't i don't watch television shows so i don't i haven't seen downton abbey but i saw the movie and she was fantastic in it and you know there's another movie coming up but uh, yeah, my grandmother, when I was a kid, introduced me to Sister Act, and it's like one of the reasons why I love musicals so much. And even though she was kind of like one of the antagonists in the movie, she still, you know, when she gives her her blessing to Sister Mary and Clarence, finally, it's like, it was just, you know, your heart is filled. And it really was uh, uh, one of my, it's one of my favorite all time movies ever. So. Uh, I couldn't leave out Maggie Smith because uh, she was in, in one of my favorite movies of all time. So what a classic, what a legend. Um, yeah. Uh, Gosford Park, Room with the View. She also joins Judy Dench in the uh, Magical Hotel movies. So we get crossover there. And uh, yeah, she's phenomenal. She is. I keep meaning to see Gosford Park because oh, uh, so great! My, uh, on all mentions, Helen Mirren is in that film as well. Yes, <laughs> has such a stellar cast. I remember when I was a kid watching Hook in the theater and just loving Maggie Smith like practically my whole life because of that. So, um, and also the lonely passion of Judith Hearn. I mean, people don't talk about it that much, but I believe she did. Uh, yeah, she did uh, star in it. So, oh, um, and her, her son, Toby Stevens, is also in the Bond franchise. He's the baddie from Die Another Day. Oh, cool. So, yeah, connections. She's yeah. also, uh, so yeah, she won the Academy Award for that movie, The Prime of Miss Jean Brody. Oh, that was so and, good. So good. And California Sweet, she won Supporting Actress for. But, uh, yeah, nominated oh, six times. Double. She's oh, done the double. Amazing. And I never knew she'd done the double. 
Well, it's best actress, best supporting actress, if that matters. Yeah, the double. That's why I call it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so while especially. Gonna... Oh well, I was just gonna say, especially since the Academy doesn't always recognize like English actors, like the English actors are acting their socks off, and the Academy's like, let's nominate Americans, but you know, the really great ones get through. <laughs> So you're okay, ready? my my number four. Yes, yes. Is when you're ready. Sally Hawkins. I remember. Uh, let's see, what? Thirteen years ago now, almost thirteen years ago now. Uh, I saw Happy Go Lucky, um, mm -hmm. Mike Lee's film, and she's all like so energetic. I've never seen anyone so energetic in my life, and it it just filled me with gusto i'm like i want to conquer the world now like she can do it like she made me feel that way and of course her recent success with the shape of water and she was also i i looked it up it's such an early film of hers it's like one of her first films also with mike lee all or nothing was just so emotional um and uh this i think it was canadian she portrayed a canadian person um in the film Madi. i believe it was the first film i saw with movie pass do you remember movie pass oh, a few years ago oh yeah they yeah, would just let you see a movie. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that was like the first film I saw. And it was just so amazing about this painter. And she she can just take any role and just fill it full of life. Um, also, Blue Jasmine, she played Kate Blanchett's sister. It's so mm -hmm. funny. I wanted. What's that? Keep me into watch uh, Blue Jasmine. I'm not really a big Woody yeah. Allen fan. So it kind of. I know. Me I know. I hate that. I. I was a huge fan, but I'm kind of tapering off because I know it's too controversial. But um, both Kate Blanchett and Sally Hawkins plays her sister, um, adopted sister, but you know, sisters. Um, and yeah. they're just both so phenomenal. Even like Sally Hawkins in a supporting role can like make you remember her. Oh yeah, Paddington too. <laughs> I just, love Paddington. I love the Paddington. She's just, <laughs> you know, Sally Hawkins' reaction is like, the bear is really her son or something you know it's so cute <laughs> she's in a movie right now nice. uh co-starring nice, nice kristen choice. stewart with uh spencer so yes she's she's still acting and doing and, great amazing and, yes. and she i saw that she's in a movie with uh, mark rylance as well coming out cool i can't remember what that one's called Let's find out. You, you um, guys ready? She's gonna. Up? She is gonna be in the uh, oh. the um, the Willy Wonka movie. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. yes. How fun! Did you guys see that boy boy called Christmas film? No. Oh, I, I don't knew, think so. No, no, no. Uh, because that was out. That was out of the cinema where I work, and I did, I haven't seen it yet, but I know she's in that. Yeah, I think that came out on Netflix. Yeah, it's on Netflix here. Oh, net. nice. Um, nice one. All right. 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 You guys ready to hear my number four? Hit it. My number four is an actress I uh, first watched in a Doctor Who episode. And this woman has conquered Hollywood in the last year. She's been nominated for an Oscar twice, and she is in, and to name some movies that she's been in is Drive, Inside Lewin Davis, The Great Gatsby, and one of my favorite movies of this decade, Promising Young Promising Woman. Promising Young Woman. Miss <laughs> Carrie Mulligan. She is Love built her. her career from the ground, starring in a Brit, and a guest spot in a British episode, and then conquering Hollywood to. After seeing her in Promising Young Woman, she is such a phenomenal actress. I really wish that she would play more roles like that and really, like, shine. Because after Promising Young Woman, I watched The Dig, and her performance in that is nowhere near as close to her performance in Promising Young Woman. And I think, Carrie, you need to be doing better roles and better performances. And I really think that she has a really bright future ahead of her now. And that's why she's my number four. Yeah, I mean, I would say all of her performances are great. I liked her in The Dig. Um, you know, we were introduced to her in an education, at least over here. Um, uh, I thought she was great in Suffragette, you know, being in every single frame of that movie, pretty much. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, all the ones that you mentioned. I mean, she's great in The Great Gatsby, even though the movie isn't, uh, you know, 
a Boz Lerman hit. Um, but yeah, Which we'll talk I, about really, really week. good choice. <laughs> yes, Boz Lerman films next week. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, I am an education super fan. I love that movie so much. And it felt like there was a dry a dry period where we didn't see her. And uh, but she was the sister, one of the sisters in Pride and Prejudice, 2005. Um, which I recently saw because uh, I, I mean, she, yeah, she was nobody back then. Excuse me for saying that. And then I recently, since I'm such a big Jane Austen fan, I recently saw North Anger Abbey. I think it was a BBC production with Felicity Jones. And guess who plays her friend, Carrie Mulligan? It was so Ooh. such a pleasure. Like both of them were like they must have been at the very beginning of the careers. They didn't have names yet, and so it was so. But I probably saw it within the last year, just like, oh my gosh, this is so great to see to see them together. Yes, and I watched yeah. uh, your YouTube video on Promising Young Woman, and I kind of agree with you on that, actually. Uh, did I do a video on Promising Young Woman? Are you talking about yeah, you, yeah, you did, uh, Alison, you did the alternative idea suggestion. Oh, yeah. 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 I would have loved to see a different ending to that, but I do agree that her performance was amazing. Yeah. One of, yeah, yeah. The ending is very, very intense. Have yes. you guys seen Shame? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I need to yeah, see Shame. Really good. Keep me to see Shame. Michael Fassbender. Right, just Where's he been? Not filming an X Men movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I have a feeling, Justin, that your number four pick is going to be a really good one. So I want, really want to hear it. Well, let's let's find out. Um, she is. Well, let's see. One of my young, no, she's not my youngest, but she's definitely one of my youngest, and she hasn't been around that long. Uh, actually, I think we were mostly all introduced to her in the movie, uh, at least more and more, um, in Moonlight. It's, uh, Naomi Harris. I think she is a phenomenal actress. Uh, you know, she has been around in some things like her top four on IMDb is 28 Days Later, uh, in Skyfall yeah. and Spectre because she was Money yeah. Penny. But yeah. to me, she really brought the game her a game when it came to moonlight uh she got the role like two two days before and then she had to learn all those lines to go shoot in just two days as well so she really only had like five days total to do this entire sort of shoot and she just killed it i think she also got nominated for best supporting actress and um you know she does take on these other sort of like fun roles like black and blue, you know, with, um, with, uh, Tyrese and stuff. And, and it's, and it's good that she's able to take, she's able to get these sort of roles. Now, these are roles that maybe would have gone to somebody else, but because of her acting, uh, I think she's really, uh, starting to starting to blossom. Um, I just saw her in Swan Song with Mahershala Ali and she was fantastic. Uh, she's in mm -hmm. Venom, let there be carnage, even though that movie wasn't really good, but, um, uh, She's just a phenomenal, phenomenal actress, and I really want to see more of her. And, uh, you know, she's also very, very pretty. And, um, yeah, I really just enjoy her performance and seeing her on screen every single time that I've seen her, even though it has only been pretty much, you know, since Moonlight and uh, Money Penny. So Naomi Harris is my number four. How um, you not send 28 Days Later? Yeah, I mean, I just don't remember, like, her, you know. The movie itself was so weird that that's sort of what sticks with me instead of, like, the actors who are in it. And that was in 2002. Oh, yeah, it's, it's well-directed. It's very well-directed. Yes. But yeah, brilliant, brilliant choice. Brilliant, brilliant choice. Brilliant choice. I One of my honorable mentions is a uh, Fady Newton. I also think that she's a phenomenal actress as well. Yeah, Naomi Harris was when we, yeah. when we first talked about it, she was like, I'm for sure putting her on my list. She was like the first one I thought of. So um, uh, I'm really, I'm really into her. Nice, nice, nice. What? So Alison, what is your bronze? 
Okay, so bronze, and I wish I could give all these people gold, but she was in Sense and Sensibility, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Finding Neverland. I think everybody knows who I'm talking about. Labor Day, Ammonite, uh, Kate Winslet. Um, I just loved her so much. It was so funny. Like, I loved her so much in Sense and Sensibility. I'm sorry I'm on this Jane Austen kick, but like when I heard that she was going to be in Titanic, like when they announced it, I was a teenager. I'm like, oh my gosh, Kate Winslet, she was the one in Sense and Sensibility. And you know, it was, that was like one of her earliest films. It's like, you never know with these actors if you're ever going to see them in a film again. And so like when she was in this film, Titanic, it was like, oh wow, I was really looking forward to it. And ever since then, like she keeps, I mean, she has a solid career. She's over 40 now. I don't even know how old she is. I'm not going to say. I wouldn't even say if I did know. But it's like she's just a solid, solid uh, actress. Like she's in demand. We're going to see so much of her. So I'm so glad. I mean, we've My already favorite seen of so hers much. is Eternal Sunshine. Yeah, What's that so about good. Eternal Sunshine? Oh yeah, one of my That's favorites. My favorite of hers. That's my favorite of hers. Oh oh yeah. She plays a down to earth character really well. Oh yeah, so amazing. And yeah. I feel weird mentioning that because she does have like an American accent in that, but no, she does an American accent. Great, um, you know, she's English, um, but you can't yeah, even she tell can do anything. That she's no. Like, People no. would never have guessed that she's British. Like she's so right. If good they didn't know, at doing everything else, you know. I like the holiday. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a fun. The holiday's one. fun. Yeah. Nancy Myers love yeah. her too. She's great. great. She is great. She is great. I and like something's got to give as well. The one with Keanu Reeves. Oh, yeah. That's actually my favorite, Nancy Myers. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Something's so going to give. ready for my number three? Yes. Let's hear it. Yes. You ready? She is actually a Harry Potter, Harry Potter actress. But <laughs> the movie I love her in is my all-time favorite movie, Fight Club. And I also love her work with her ex-partner, Tim Burton, Miss Helena Bonham Carter. And I also so love far, the I've piece of because I love her as Margaret in the Crown, even though I do prefer Vanessa Kirby. But what really made her shine in these in these period dramas was her role in The King's Speech, which is one of my favorite period drama films. Yeah, um, you know, she's it just, also it just she is she is a solid actress, solid solid actress. She's also really good with the voice acting. I nearly she does a lot of that. that I put her on. And um, uh, she's also in Suffragette. Yes. That's so funny. Um, but uh, she can sing too. She's a really good singer, you know, in Les Miserables. She's great. And then um, I just think she's, she's very versatile. Like she, you know, she's one of those actresses that, that's in a lot of things and can do a lot and will continue to be you know, a working actress for the rest of her career, I think. Yeah. Oh, oh you wait till, I, till you hear my number two. She's very versatile. But before you hear my number two, what's your number three, Justin? Uh, okay. My number three, this is, this is my youngest actress. Um, in her top four on IMD, IMDb, we have movies such as... Edge of Tomorrow, The Devil Wears Prada, The Adjustment Bureau, and Salmon Fishing in Yemen. It's Miss Emily Blunt. Uh, I think Emily she's... Blunt, she just missed the list for me. She was my six. She's so freaking good and so lovable and likable. And when she's on screen, you're just sort of smiling. And even in The Devil's Wears Prada- Do you, do you, know, you like the girl on the train? Do you like the girl on the train? Because that's the <laughs> film that made me that made her stand out I, for me. I think she's a really good actress and she does really well in that movie, even if it doesn't you know, really work for some people. But um, hold on, let the dogs go crazy. <laughs> Shush. Uh, but I just, uh, you know, I I just fell in love with her for and everything that she's done. Um, you know, the Quiet Place movies are booming. Um, you know, Jungle Cruise did really well, so she's already in two great movies or two bigger movies from this past year. 
Um, but even like when she's in uh, smaller roles, like Dan in real life, I thought was really like simple and simplistic with um, with Steve Carell, but still just just really well done. But uh, my favorite performance was the young Victoria, and that's really where I fell in love with her because I, I love that. period piece movies, and you know. Victoria is such a, a cool, not a cool, but a, like a really good topic to, to learn about. And I thought she portrayed her perfectly. And yeah, I mean, I, she's great in Sunshine Cleaning. I mean, you know, with um, uh, the other red, <laughs> uh, but. Uh, do, do, do you like, do you like Sakalo, the one she did with Josh Brolin? Yes, yes. And I, I did like Deo Soldado as well, just for its sort of like action and stuff, but it was missing Emily Blunt. It was definitely missing missing Emily Blunt, but yeah. she's a great yeah. actress. Uh, I I'm, think her I'm, and John I'm glad that they just. What were you saying? At least they kept her girl on the train just to one film. <laughs> yeah, uh, I but I love her and John to John Krasinski movie. together. I think they're great. Um, and yeah, I, uh, Edge of Tomorrow is a really fun film too with with her and uh, Tom Cruise. So go, I, you know, I love action, and that's a great action film. So my number three is Emily Blunt. It is so funny that you said salmon fishing in the Yemen. I thought you were going to name my number two actress, and we're going to have like a back to back fest. But um, this actress was also salmon fishing in the Yemen. English patients for weddings and a funeral. I think you know I'm talking about Kristen Scott Thomas. I love her so much. And she was also in I've Loved You So Long, which is a French film, um, Sarah's Key. She's done a lot of French stuff. I think her mm -hmm. husband was French. So she mm -hmm. she said she mainly considers herself French. So, but I, she's also in a bunch of great English language films and I just love her so much and, uh, Part of the reason why I love her so much was watching her in so many French films, but like Four Weddings and a Funeral is so solid, so One classic. Of my, favorite, my favorite romantic comedy film that is. Oh, oh, it's so good, so good. I mean, I don't want to sound like an old fogey, but they really don't make them like that anymore. I really wish <laughs> no, like every romantic no, comedy no, no, no. was like that, just so good. But you know, it's you know, I'm I'm like kind of like oh yeah, I like romantic comedies, but that one just is like. Upper yeah. level. And, yeah. and I actually like The English Patient because I know a lot yeah. of people don't. Oh, yeah. I don't get why there's so much hate for that movie. It's got, it, it's practically like Pearl Harbor, but better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, she's also in Gosford Park. War, war drama. She's yeah, great think, in the other did building. You get nominated? English patient. So I know the other girl won, but I can't remember whether she got. Oh nominated. right, Shlip Um, yeah. that's a good question. Let's see here. She yeah, she hasn't won. Um, just Screen Actors Critics Choice. Yeah. Oh, it did say she got a Golden Globe and Oscar nomination for the English Patient. Ah, yeah, that's, nominated, that, that's for sure. the question then. Yeah. But she's yeah. a five time BAFTA award winner. Yeah. So that's good. Ooh, well, the um, BAFTA is not anybody British. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She was in The Darkest yes. Hour recently. Ooh, that uh, was a good movie. Re the Military Wives, uh, Rebecca. Um, nothing and in 2021. The new Rebecca, I felt, was it, but she killed it. Like, I was not really interested in anybody except Mrs. Danvers. So, you know, I have a problem if, like, Mrs. Danvers is your most interesting character, but she nailed it. She she acted like she was, you know, working with the golden script. So, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's yes. a true professional, um, you know. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Looks like her next one so comes up. Are you guys ready to hear Ooh, yes, it's I like Team Raider. Team Raider. I like Team Raider. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? What's your number two? You guys ready to hit? Yes, you, re you guys ready to hit my number two then? So ready. This is a this actress is an Oscar winner, but I'm not in the film she won for. But what I do know her from is not. 
All right, okay. I'm not big on the fantasy franchise she's in, but it's her dramatic and indie performances I go for. And the one movie that made her stand out for me is 2011's We Need to Talk About Kevin, Miss Tilda Swinton. Oh, yeah. I've guessed, she, I've guessed three she of is your a facts chameleon. so far, She can transform herself into any role she can. A lot of people yeah. know, obviously, that she is one of my favorite actresses of all time. She just missed being number one. But I just think that she can transform herself into any character. Granted, she and she does try and pull in off 100% every time she's in a role, whether it's a good or bad performance. But we, we talk about Kevin really showed me that she is a brilliant actress. And... I feel like the dramatic roles and the one where she changes herself into are the ones I like. Especially now she's on like in Wes Anderson films, like she's always like a different character in that. So I liked her in Moonrise Kingdom and the French Dispatch, and she really like stole her scenes in their movies. Sorry, Justin, <laughs> I know you're not big on the French Dispatch. It's okay. I really do like her performance and other people's performance in it. So. Um... Yeah, uh, We Need to Talk About Kevin is my favorite Tilda Swinton movie, but it's just a great film overall. Uh, but I re- the first time I ever saw her was in The Beach with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, um, where she was kind of like the head of like the cult there. And uh, I really, really you liked her. the best thing movie. about that movie. Tilda? Yeah, she's probably the best. Yeah, she's probably the best thing about that. Her and Robert Carlyle. I like, it was I back like before beach. Leo did the departed, and it was back before thought, Leo did the departed and became became really good. Well, <laughs> in two thousand is way before he did that, but yeah. Um, no, I like I like the beach. I think it was a weird, fun film. I like the beach too. I found out later, like that it had bombed. I'm like, what? You know, I liked yeah. it. Okay, I'll be honest. My my friend read the book and then watched the movie, and she gave a really bad review of the film that just haunts me now forever. No, oh, you got to see it. It's great. Uh, yeah, she I, need was to, in Suspiria, I need to give her a second crazy. chance, to be fair. And she played um, like two or three roles in that, too, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, Amazing. and she's yeah. in a movie with Meryl Streep and called adaptation and it's funny that they share the same scene in that film oh yeah so they both put on really good performances in that film it's just nice to see them together all right all right just justin who's your second well it's already this person's already been mentioned um I mean, she just has to be on your list if you're talking British actresses. She just has to be because she's also one of the greatest actresses that we have. She's Cody's favorite actress, and it's Allison's number three. It's Kate Winslet. Um, She is just a phenomenal actress. I mean, she also just seems like a great person, too, you know, Um, whether that's true or not. But... uh, um, you know, I was introduced to her in Titanic, of course. Um, you know, uh, Sense and Sensibility came to me a little bit later in life. Uh, I do love her in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I think her performance in The Reader is one of the greatest female performances or acting performances, just period. Keep meaning ever. To I thought that she was because she's there's... so good. What were you saying? And speak, oh, go ahead. Sorry, there's. That, yeah, there's you know you know the show extra. She makes that joke about doing that role because she's one of, because she wants to win an Oscar and that she plays that that she won an Oscar for that similar role. She jokes about. She sure did. But that's yeah. why I want to uh, see the reader. It's re- I really like it. She's been nominated seven times for an Oscar. She won for the reader. Um, yeah, I'm I mean she, she didn't win for she, Titanic. Yeah. Oh, I she, remember watching the awards broadcast, and you should have seen her face when she lost. She literally was like oh, so angry, I angriest face I've ever seen. So, I mean, 
I'm sure she's more poised now, but back when she was younger and kind of expecting it, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I, it was oh, no, the I biggest do, movie I do like Helen Hunt as good as it gets. Oh, she's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you said so much about her already. I don't need to oh. say too much more about <laughs> but, her. But I mean, she's the reader, just... she had a German accent, right? So it's like, yes. speaking of accents. And tons and tons of dialogue and monologue. I mean, she just, you, every word was like inside of her coming out, you know, she's definitely not one that ever seems like she's acting, um, you know, even if she's in Divergent and stuff like that. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, she's just freaking phenomenal. She, like I said, there's no reason why she shouldn't be on all of our lists. Um, yeah, The Holiday, Revolutionary Road, uh, contagion. I really liked her in Labor Day. I thought she was really good in that with just like sort of like a two hander with uh, Josh Brolin there. Um, I really I'll liked her in oh. Ammonite. I also like her as a voice actress, so I like her in Flushed Away. Yeah, Flushed Away it's is a, really a fun, fun film. animated movie. Um, she also voices in Mary and the Witch's Flower, Swift. Ooh. Daisy Chain, she's 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 great. She's just phenomenal. What a what a great actress, and and totally deserve it to be on all of our lists. So, Kate Winslet's my number two. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. So, Alison, who's your favorite British actress? Okay. Uh, oh, just real quick, um, I forgot to mention uh, Kate Winslet's great performance in Mildred Pierce too. The series, the limited series, just like. It's a remake, and so I was very hesitant because the original Mildred Pierce was good, but yeah, she knocked it dead. Um, so my favorite, um, I feel like I'm cheating here because she's half French, but my favorite uh, British actress would definitely be Charlotte Gainsbourg. So I feel like it's also cheating because uh, she recently is she directed... Girl, is she the one that plays Sean Penn's wife in 21 Grams? Yes, and that was the first film I ever saw her in, and I was just that's like, a very, "That was a very interesting movie because that it's evil be." Yeah, so yeah. I thought she was evil at first because she's such a good actress, and then I saw a bunch of her other films, like, "Oh, she seems really pleasant, actually." <laughs> but like uh, her, uh, the three films she did with Lars von Trier, which really just elevated her. I. I feel um, Antichrist, Melancholia, and Nymphomaniac. Well, Nymphomaniac parts one and two. Oh, and you know what? I think her best performance is in Melancholia. I think it was the year before, maybe. She was uh, she won Best Actress at Cannes for Antichrist, mm -hmm. which was an amazing performance. And then the year after, I think uh, Kirsten Dunst won for Melancholia. But I felt like Charlotte Gainsbourg was even better than she was in any of her other films. Like, I, I guess I couldn't give it to her two years in a row. Maybe I was biased, but she has like this full blown panic attack and melancholia. And I just, just totally admired that. That um, it just blew me away. And it's so funny that you have actresses who's worked with uh, Kirsten Dunst in your list. <laughs> I did. Like, I didn't even realize that. Well, yeah, Kate Winslet. And, but like, yeah, Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of a coincidence, uh, but yeah, so, but like, yeah, Charlotte also directed a documentary on her mom. Uh, this year was showing at uh, New York Film Festival. Um, so, you know, she just, oh, and I saw her twice live in concert too. She's a great singer, um, just like her dad was a great singer and songwriter. Um, and she'll always sing a song or two by her dad. So I know that's kind of cheating because we're just talking about acting here. It doesn't really matter about the other stuff. But she's the whole package, I think. Is this because of her performance in Jane Eyre? Are you? Is it because you're? Oh yeah. Eyre? You know what? I do. I do like Jane Eyre. I think that was a little bit before. Uh, like when she started to really up her game. So she was good in Jane Eyre, but that's not my personal favorite, but I really do love the book Jane Eyre and she is good. Like I'll, I'll take her in anything. Sweet. Um, her top credit is Nymphomaniac. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> uh, that's an Which is kind of funny. Movie. She's not really in part yeah. one. I think she does do the narration for part one, but like, 
the, the younger version of her is played by Stacey Martin, and then she morphs into Charlotte Gainsbourg. So, I well, crazy. I mean, Charlotte Morf uh, Gainsbourg takes the character over, but yeah. So yeah, and good, interesting, underrated, underrated, underrated choice. Yeah. yeah, very underrated yeah. choice. So she is a good actress, but she's not like in the mainstream compared to the other actresses we've spoken yeah. about. Yeah, like she's recognized by like the Cannes Film Festival, but like Oscars. Nah, they don't really pay attention. Like I thought they would probably nominate her that follow the Cannes Fil Film Festival lead. Nah, nah. <laughs> you know, crazy. Right. So you guys ready to hear my number one? Yeah. Let's this this actress is a uh, this actress I consider a national treasure. I really do because she's worked her way up from British sitcoms. And she's an Oscar winner now. She's recently had a movie on Netflix. She really, really showed her acting for me in a in a British comedy movie called Hot Fuzz. I was introduced to her. And I think now I recognize her as one of the best actresses ever. Miss Olivia Coleman. The favourite said it all of how she became a great actress. The favourite said it all. But what really, really made her stood out for me was a BBC, no, ITV drama in the UK called Broadchurch with her and David Tennant. And Olivia gives off her best performance ever. And it's just fantastic, all the stuff her character goes through and seeing how she portrays this character really well. And it's just a stand-up performance. And because obviously I lost my granddad to dementia, seeing her and the father play this person like struggling with a relative with dementia really opened my eyes to how 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 well she got it. And I think this, and I think that is the reason why I put her as number one. And obviously seeing her start off in Peep Show and other uh, sitcoms in the UK, it's really amazing to see how she's climbed that ladder, just like Carrie Mulligan and all these other actresses has and um, i respect her a lot as an actress and that's why she's my number one amazing and she killed it in the lost daughter she did. um her yeah, eyes yeah. said everything it's just like you could read her mind it was so beautiful such a beautiful although my favorite performance in that was actually uh, jesse buckley Oh, yes. so amazing too. That's oh, amazing. she she could easily belong on this list too. Just so yeah. amazing. She will do in a couple that, of years. She will she will break Wild the Rose yes. or whatever. Mm -hmm. so yes. Good. I need to see Wild Rose. I haven't seen it. Oh, that. you'll love it. I, I can almost guarantee it's so beautiful. Nice. I will check just that. in right, this just year in, uh, alone. Hold, I want to talk a little bit more about Olivia Coleman. Just in this year alone, if you count the father, because it did come out in twenty twenty one. Also the lost daughter. Landscapers, which is a Hulu TV show. The Mitchells versus the Machines, where she voiced yes, in. Yes, I, I forgot she's uh, in my favorite animated film this year as well. Ron's Gone Wrong, which is another animated film that came out this year. Uh, Mothering Sunday, which is an independent film that came out. And The I Electrical Life of Louis Wayne. I'm seeing that she's on Wednesday. In, I'm seeing that on Wednesday. She's in seven things in just this year alone. I mean, it has wow. to be the most by anybody. Yes. So, she works pretty damn hard. good. Yes. And I really did like her in The Favorite, uh, even though I do think that Glenn Close maybe could have been there. But uh, yeah, I do agree. My favorite that performance in that was actually Emma Stone because of how well she put on the British actress accent. Sorry. I think all three of them were really, really good in that movie. Oh yeah, it was insane how good yeah. they, how good it was. It was just, yeah. Yeah. So, who's your favorite British actress, then, Justin? All right. Well, I think when we, when you, I think, what do you call Olivia Coleman? A uh, something, a uh, national treasure. I think yes. we have the biggest national treasure here. Uh, this lady has been nominated, not just for Oscars, but total for a thousand different things and has won 67, which is amazing. Uh, <laughs> nominated three times for Best Actress and won. Uh, she 
uh, portrayed the first version of one of the other uh, actresses that I talked about earlier, Emily Blunt. Uh, she is Miss Mary Poppins and she's Julie Andrews. Is my number one. Um, it's because what we just said, she's a national treasure. I mean, she's just everything that she does, everything that she in, is in is like a huge hit, you know. Uh, her top four, this is funny, is Sound of Music, Mary Poppins, Victor Victoria, and then The Princess Diaries. <laughs> so, um, but not, not Shrek 2. Not, not, why is it Shrek was just in gonna, that top four? I was just about to start talking about, and plus she has great vocal performances because, yeah, Shrek, um, but she's also in the Despicable Me movies. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, and she has a long list of all these amazing credits um but yeah let's just talk about the the two biggest ones mary poppins and the sound of music i mean those movies transcend generations the they first, were which i watched the first time both last year oh yeah and i uh, the first yeah. time i'd seen sound of music was last year as well i had not seen it oh, wow. uh, of course i've seen mary poppins you know thousands of times as a kid but uh, she's she's just amazing. I mean, every everything that she, she she's just like Emily Blunt, where when she's on screen, you're smiling. She's beautiful, um, and she's just really good at being uh, somebody that you root for in a movie. She she's a leading actress every single time. She's even in a supporting role. Uh, she's just a phenomenal, phenomenal star, and I think one that everyone knows and loves, and you know, talks about and yeah uh, uh julie andrews is, is my number one with a whole spoonful of sugar didn't she get the oscar for did, didn't she get mary the oscar poppins. for mary poppins yes and then nominated for sound and yeah, music and victor victoria for she did yeah i thought that would um won. i thought she would have won for sound and music because i thought she was better in that for some reason yeah no she lost out um, but yeah, nominated. Let's see. Uh, she lost to Julie Christie Ugh, in Darling. So he's also Julie. in the Harry Potter franchise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, fantastic. All right. Shall we uh, count them yes. down? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. So what we do now, Alison, is we go back and forth to say each other's. So what was your number five again? Okay, so my number five was Emma Thompson. And my number five was Dame Judi Dench. Uh, she may be a dame. Maggie Smith, is she a dame? My, that's my number yeah, five. Yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah. Another dame. Yeah. And your number and four, Allison? Four, Sally Hawkins. My number four was Carrie Mulligan. My number four, also uh, a nice young actress, uh, Naomi Harris. Number three, Kate Winslet. My number three, Miss Helena Bonham Carter. My number three, Miss Emily Blunt. My number two was Dame Kristen Scott Thomas. What was your number three? Uh, my number three was uh, Kate Winslet. Ah, oh, nice. My number two was Tilda Swinton, who's not a dame yet. Oh, yet, yet, keyword. Yes. <laughs> My number two was Allison's number three, and that's Kate Winslet. She's a superstar. Nice. And my number one was Charlotte Gainsbourg. My number one was Miss Olivia Coleman. And my number one was Julie Andrews. So, so good. Who I think is actually a dame as well. I got two of them on mine. <laughs> I've only uh, got yeah, one, so... but I think I think the top two will be future names for some reason. Um, just some uh, also rans just for fun. Uh, Rosamund Pike, I think, is a great actress. Um, Rachel Weiss is a really good actress. Uh, Rebecca Hall, um, and then Charlotte Rampling, I think, is a really really good yes. actress. She was on my honorable mentions. I really thought I was going to be able to include her in my top five, but she has it all when she was young. She was so beautiful, and her acting chops are just 
unbelievable. She has like the whole package. She's amazing. Uh, yeah, look at her when she was younger. Helen Mirren, Fady Newman, honorable mentions. Rosamund Pike nearly missed the list as well. Emily Blunt missed the list. List um, and yeah, uh, on yeah, Emma Thompson would have been on the list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Naomi Watts yeah. is a great blog actress. Blog of, blog of she is. I had a couple of actors uh, that I wanted to include, but they were Australian, so like Naomi Watts. I mean, I think I, Naomi Watts was born in England, right? Yeah, she was. But she grew she up was. in Australia, yeah. so like so, Judith Anderson. Like yeah. So oh, my honorable. Nicole Kidman, she was born in Hawaii and lived oh, in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then, of course, Kate Blanchett, but she's Australian. But eh. but my honorable mentions for English actors are like Olivia Williams, Tilda Swinton. I really wanted to include her. I'm like, how can I fit her in? Emily Watson, Samantha Morton, Sir Sharonin, yeah, Samantha Lenore Watling. And then, yeah, Charlotte Rampling was on my list. Judy Dench, Carrie Mulligan, Maggie Smith. Um, and then I added uh, Olivia Coleman, Vanessa Kirby, and Jesse Buckley to put on my top a favorite actress list because it's like they're newer to me, but they're already so amazing. And I I'm was sure, debating yeah. whether to put Anya Taylor Joy on here, but I thought she was a bit too young and needs more experience first. Oh, yeah. She is so amazing. Like, just. Uh, the Queen's Gambit and uh, Last Night in Soho alone, just those two are amazing. But she's amazing in everything. She's so professional. You know how those younger actresses, well, don't aren't always you know with it, but she is so with it. Mm -hmm. Like she she knows everything. She can do the accents. She's yeah. She yeah. she's got what it takes. Feature Oscar winner probably. And also J D Comer as well. She's another one of my favorites. At oh, the she's moment. so good. She is. Um, Did you see the last jewel? I didn't. It's I amazing. need to. It's so good. So good. Um, another it, that one kind of had the same sort of nightmare alley thing where it's such a great movie. Everyone should have saw it in theaters and and didn't. You know. Um, I think Lily Collins is really good uh, coming up. Um, Imogene Poots is one of my favorites uh, coming up here. She's a really solid actress. Um, Lawrence, but yeah. Is a is one of my favorites as well. Yeah, she's good. Um, yeah, all right. I think we did well, everybody. Yeah. Yes, yes, we did very well, very well. Uh, Alison, at the end of the episode, we like to uh, say a movie recommendation. Do you have a movie you'd like to recommend? Oh, okay. Like um, just any movie? Any movie, classic or new or old. Okay, um, that's really a good question. Um, I'm going to be, um, I'm a huge Jonathan Rosenbaum fan, and he recommended the film The Eddie Duchin Story. And I've seen that movie twice, like once before I was like into criticism and once after, and then after, once I evaluated the film critically, like I could just see the amazing cinematography, the amazing performances, and like why I liked it. So I really, it's on DVD somewhere. It's kind of hard, harder to seek out, but it's available. It's a 1956 Very musical nice. drama. Yes, Ooh. it sure is. We should okay. do. We should do. We should do. We should. We should do that for one of your videos, uh, Justin, one day. Um, yeah, yeah, wow. So this yeah. is, yeah, it's uh, to rent for two ninety nine on Vudu and Prime and, and stuff. But uh, okay, that's a good recommendation. Nice. Uh, the film I'm going to recommend. The box office is good. Especially for back then, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah, that's what I was thinking. The film, <laughs> the film I'm going to uh, recommend today, I first had my experience watching the Pedro Almodovar film, and I'm going to recommend all about my mother, if you guys like uh, foreign it. films. Love so it. this one has a lot of good colours and a lot of interesting storylines, and it really deals with its adult themes very well. And I do want to explore more of his movies because I want to see Parallel Mothers. But I think the first my first experience went well. And I do recommend All About My Mother if you want to check out more of Spanish cinema. I love that film so much. 
it stayed with me. I saw it maybe, well, I want to say 20 years ago. It probably wasn't that long ago. I love it so much yeah. and I love him so much because of it. So great. Yeah, I haven't Have seen, seen that it one. Before, Justin? No, I haven't, but yeah. you know. Definitely worth the Pedro. Be. Definitely worth Pedro likes working with Penelope Cruz, huh? Um, yeah. Because my movie that I was going to recommend that I have seen this week was Parallel Mothers. Um, I got to see it at the Landmark. And uh, yeah, uh, the way Pedro Amadovar does his movies is he has this sort of through line, but then he makes you think this way and then that way and then around this way. And then it comes back and you're like, whoa. Okay, it's sort of like Pain and Glory was was that way for me, and uh, I felt like he did it again in Parallel Mothers. I don't know if you guys know what the storyline is, but it's, I, I mean, I would never want to go through that as like a parent or whatever. It's just heartbreaking and and heartwarming and uh, uplifting, and but also really really sad all, all at once. And uh, um, the way that he does Penelope his movies, getting an Oscar nom. Um, no, probably not. Uh, you know, there's a lot. Of I wouldn't be surprised movies. though. She was great. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised yeah, yeah. either way. Yeah, no, she she's very it's deserve it. I just I just think you know that what they do with these movies is as pass over them most of the time. You know, um, uh, yeah, it's not like my favorite performance by her either. But I thought she was really really good. You know, I think Olivia Coleman probably is going to slip in there instead of uh, instead of uh, Penelope Cruz, but she's fantastic. She still looks good for her age, and and still pulls off phenomenal for performances. And I really like the duo of Elmo Duvar and, and Penelope Cruz. So uh, that's my recommendation. And you're, of, and you're like all about my mother, then, even though she's only a supporting yeah. role in that. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to see that, um, Allison? You know, they have the Academy Museum here uh, now in LA. And uh, Ooh, yay. there's there's a level, just a little floor that's all Pedro Almodovar, and it's like all these screens, uh, and you walk in, and, it, and it's blue. It's just a, this dark blue, and you are sort of light blue, but with all the lights down. And then um, you walk under, and you can the speakers above you, and you can watch his films on each of the screens, and it's it's really oh, I love really that. Awesome. I know they've been building it for the last four or five years, and the second I move, they open it. Ah, yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've been a couple of times and it's magical every time. Amazing. Nice, nice. So next week, me and Justin will return to talk about Baz Lerman movies. I need to watch Strictly Ballroom in Australia and then we can properly talk about them. Alison, it's been yeah. an absolute pleasure having you on the show. It's it been was great. So fun. It's been so fun to talk Fantastic about. To with you. And we hope to have you join us again one day. I think I'd love to. It was a fun conversation. Why don't you uh, tell people where you, you can be seen? Sure. Uh, you can go to my website at cinemabecomesher.com or I'm Allison M on Letterboxd or on Twitter. I'm Alice Cinema. That's A-L-L-I Cinema. I love that. What was the, the dot com? Cinema something? Uh, cinemabecomesher.com. All right. Cool. I'm checking that out right now. Cool. It's not as updated, it. but I'm going to hopefully post some more reviews and stuff on there. So. Are you going to no, start awesome. your own awards like I do? Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, you uh, get awesome. less annoyed with, you, with, with your Oscar picks if, when, when that. If they'll have my own awards, I'll be like, well, it's a good thing it won my awards. Yes, exactly. I'm the worst, though, at uh, picking Oscar. At Oscar I, picks. I haven't, I I haven't got the best picture right since 12 Years a Slave. Oh. I never get I the was best right. picture right, do I, just um, even when I'm trying to be wrong? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was right with uh, Green Book, but that was, you know, nobody wants to be right on that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, awesome. I, well, thanks I, for I, coming. I, I predicted Roma would win best picture. Oh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Allison, thanks for coming on. It's so good having you. Um, yeah. And we'll, yeah, we would love to have you back, even if it's, you know, other topics. It doesn't have to be uh, British actresses or actresses at all. But yeah, any other topic that you're available to come on, we'd love to have you back. 
Amazing. Just let me know the schedule. It was so fun. Will do, will do. Uh, who are your top five favorite British actresses? Let us know in the comments down below. Like, subscribe to my channel. And and obviously, if you have a suggestion for, for a future episode also, let us know down below. You can obviously check out my website, Robbie's Reviews Got Turtle UK. That's Robbie's Reviews Got Turtle UK. Or you can check out, obviously, my other videos on YouTube. I have reviews. I have a uh, ranked list. I only got two directors so far, but I'm hoping to have more soon. And obviously, check out any of the past episodes with me and Justin. That's right. And I'm at Worth of You Justin, Movies and all the things. Are... Yeah, Worth of You Movies and all the things. Um, uh, right now, I've been putting out my favorite sort of performances overall from 2021. So, you know, I had favorite directors of 2021, uh, production design, uh, screenplays. Um, right now I'm doing the actors and actresses supporting in, in leads. And then, um, uh, yeah, I'll be doing my favorite movies of the year, uh, this week coming up to close out 2021. Yes. 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 And I can't wait to see what your number one pick is. Oh yeah. It's yeah. good. It's good. Right, thank, I, you, I top, thank you guys for joining 20, me so and I'll be, a lot. be very nice. Nice. All right. Thank you guys for joining, and I'll see you very soon. Bye All bye. Right, until next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, Justin. Until bye, next guys. time. Until.